Hi, I'm Rosa Gallagher, and I'm the museum director at the Donkhouse German American Cultural Center. Sweat started to pour off of me as I stood in front of the class, next to a clock face and stick figure sun that I had drawn on the whiteboard. I was clutching a dry erase marker, thinking about what other signs or symbols I could draw to make my English lesson make sense. How was I going to recover from this? In a room full of people who spoke five languages I didn't know, how could I make this right? The excitement I'd walked in with that morning, worksheets and markers in hand, was gone. This volunteering assignment for school was more than I had bargained for. When I was in college at DePaul, I took a class on peace and conflict resolution. I was studying history and German and wanted to change up my class schedule. Plus, it was held in the loop, and I was excited to get off the North Side campus. Every Tuesday night, I took the Brown Line downtown for the three-hour evening class. I was excited to read and talk about ideas for how to create peace. The second week of class, our instructor passed around a handful of papers. It was a list of dozens of local nonprofits. We had to choose one that interested us most, and our job would be to volunteer there weekly for the rest of the 10-week class. The list included organizations that address issues like gun violence, homelessness, and domestic violence. They were all located in the city of Chicago and wanted to put us to work. I was excited for this project. Even though I was one of those rare college students who actually enjoyed reading and taking notes for hours on end, I was happy someone was forcing me to get out of that bubble. The idea of helping other people in an unknown setting was appealing to me. Without thinking it over too much, I wrote my name next to an organization called the Pan-African Association. The description said they were located in Edgewater and had services for refugees and asylees in Chicago. I cared about the rights of immigrants, partly because my mother was an immigrant from Germany. I knew how difficult it was for her to navigate international legal issues. I wondered about how much harder it was for people who were fleeing violence and persecution. So after a short email exchange, I settled on a busy Saturday for my first visit. When I got there, the director gave me an overview of what they did there exactly, explaining that their clients came from Congo, Burundi, and Somalia, but also countries not located in Africa, such as Burma, Bhutan, and Nepal. The first day, I got thrown right into the action by staffing the front desk answering calls and patching people through to the director and the other staff person that was in that day. I wasn't sure what was harder, figuring out how to transfer a call or understanding all the different accents of the people who called on the phone. The two hours blew by and I left the building feeling a bit flustered. This whole thing repeated itself every Saturday for the next three months. As I took the red line up from my Lincoln Park dorm to the Granville Red Line, fall became winter. As the 8 a.m. weekend trips on the red line became more frigid and more uncomfortable, I became more comfortable doing my service hours there. I was getting to know the two women on staff. Some days I organized binders of marketing material. Other times I logged donations into a spreadsheet. And eventually I also put my writing skills to use by drafting letters to potential corporate donors. One day I was surprised when they asked me to help a client take a language test on a computer. He was a young guy around my own age. The language barrier was a bit awkward, but we got through it. He passed the quiz, and I left feeling like I had accomplished something. In the last week of my volunteering stint, their programming director asked if I could fill in last minute to teach a language class for a group of their clients. I said yes without overthinking it, because I love language and enjoy sharing it with others. The morning of the class, I was armed with a set of worksheets and a whiteboard where I imagined I would make the connections crystal clear using color coding and strategic symbols. Within a minute or two, I realized this was not going to go as planned. I didn't consider the fact that the class participants were adults of a wide range of backgrounds and spoke five other languages that I had zero experience with. I started with a time-telling worksheet, showing the words we use in English to talk about time, a quarter to four, half past eight, things like that. As I went around checking in with them one by one, I learned a little bit about each of their background. Some could read and write in their first language. Others didn't use those skills in their home country. The group included men and women, mostly in their 40s and 50s, and there were several farmers, business owners, and a doctor. We all clearly felt silly using hand motions, props, 
and exaggerated facial expressions to communicate with each other as full grown adults. When I threw out a question to the class as a whole, everyone's eyes darted away and I could tell that no one wanted to go first. But as I struggled to make effective use of the teaching materials, they smiled at me encouragingly. When I finally explained the concept in a way that made sense, everyone laughed and cheered me on like proud parents. They saw that I was struggling and I saw that they were doing the same. Even though I barely exchanged five coherent sentences with anyone during the 90 minute session, by the end of it, I knew that I belonged. That Saturday morning, each of us took a risk and said yes even if it was the only word we had in common. Thank you.